So art and science are actually really interlinked. Um, they're both ways that people can explore questions and the reason why it's so important at the moment is because of all the obviously extreme issues that we're facing um, and in the science world if you are working on a problem that, that's probably really important getting the knowledge out there to people so that they can understand it is equally as important as doing the science itself I feel um, so if you can get your message across through a piece of art you anyone irrespective of their background or their expertise will be able to understand it and art has a way of invoking um, an emotional response so not only can you understand the topic but also appreciate it have empathy with it maybe and possibly be driven to some kind of behavior whether it's going to a protest or um, donating to something or just investigating it further and you can really actually maybe make a difference. So in terms of careers that you can go into with this kind of skill set it's becoming much more common and there's lots of jobs out there that you wouldn't have even thought was a job. Um, so people with an art and science background that there's more and more need for these kind of skills. So within science communication um, there's your public engagement where you might actually be tasked with creating the content for people's websites so you'd need Photoshop and video editing skills. Um, there's also companies which make animations specifically for science outreach and also science documentary making, um, wildlife filmmaking, everything like that. You need a bit of an artistic eye to be able to be a photographer or a filmmaker. Um, there's also, you know, your uh, illustrations for botanical and anatomical books where you need a super amazing photographic drawing skill So, and also a knowledge of what the parts of the plant or whatever you are, you're drawing. So, um, yeah, lots of jobs which you might not have thought of with these skills. So unless you're able to go and do two or more degrees, you're probably an artist interested in science or a scientist interested in art. Um, I think probably the more likely is that you've got a science background because arguably it's easier to keep up art in your spare time than to keep up science. Um, so I managed to get into this sort of field by, um, well, my launch into the career by the BES. Um, where I was digital engagement intern and I'd seen this job advertised on a science communication mailing job mailing list um, so I did art for A-level but then went on to do biology at university um, I kept up art in my spare time doing pet portraits and children's book illustrations um, and making a few videos and things like that so I started putting my work out um, on Instagram and kind of keeping a portfolio of all the stuff that I was doing. Um, and then when I did my masters in biodiversity, evolution and conservation research, I found a load of opportunities to actually use this skill to talk, to explain what I was talking about. So I did um, a couple of blog illustrations. Um, I also used uh, a couple of in infographics and started making stop frame animations for um, any presentations that I had to do. Um, and by sort of showing people these and getting more practice, it actually created opportunities um, out of nowhere, which was really cool. I don't mean for this to sound like I'm just totally sucking up, but um, my best day probably was my first day on um, my BES internship where after going around meeting everyone and having my initial meeting with Chris and the rest of the team I got down to cracking on with my um, animation which was going to be what is ecology and explaining the importance of it um, and I was sat there drawing foxes and just thinking to myself how have I done this I'm doing my favorite hobby as a job and it's actually gonna t gonna be towards something that's really worthwhile and I was just looking down at this fox just thinking like I am absolutely winning life right now. <laughs>
So my advice for others um, is just to say, just keep doing it basically, just keep producing and putting your art or whatever it is that you do out there. Um, my brother actually gave me a book called Show Your Work by Austin Cleon, which I'd really recommend. Um, that kind of gave me the confidence to just trust the process a bit and um, I really do believe that practice makes progress. Every time you try something it just gets better so it's just kind of commit to it and keep going is what I would say. Um, also if you're doing it alongside your research I just would say find, always look for creative ways to explain your research so whether it's for a presentation or as part of your job or just for fun um, it's never a waste of time and opportunities do seem to follow. People really appreciate you taking the time to try and explain it to non-scientific audience. Um, even other scientists who are working on something totally different, you know, you need to treat everyone with that same courtesy that they don't know all your scientific jargon and <laughs> you have to try and make it a bit more interesting for people. I'll let you know how this works for me because um, I'm hoping to stay in research and keep my art and my animations going alongside um, is the plan. So I'll let you know if it all works. <laughs> Thanks.